And one of our sponsors is Fine Print Plus. They're your source for print, packing, and promotion. Get 500 free business cards with purchase for new customers when you mention this ad. They also do graphic design, print and copies, custom apparel, promotional items, parcel service, will call and deliveries. And you can reach them at 559-237-4747. You can give them an email at graphics at fineprintplus.com or request a quote at fineprintplus.com forward slash quote. My first guest is Eric Hallmark, S-E-E-Q-S-S-P of Stoffer Glove and Safety. You can reach him at e hallmark at stoffersafety.com or give him a call at 707-637-7109. Welcome, Eric. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing lovely. It's a beautiful day out. The fog has burned off and we can talk about some safety. Yes. Can you give our listeners and viewers a little background information about yourself and stuff? Uh, myself? I've been in the PPE distribution business for 33 years, soon to be 34 years. Um, started actually right here in locally and spent 25 plus years in the Napa Valley, San Francisco Bay Area. Gotten certified in different things, a safety auditor, um, PPE inspector, a competent person in fall protection. Um, I've always felt the more I know about those types of things, the better I could serve my client base. Um, Stauffer, I've been on board with them for well, soon to be six years um, after the first year. And they have been around since 1907 on the East Coast and brought me on board as their West Coast uh, National Account Manager um and then we just started looking at the the uh, the opportunities through up and down the valley and it gave me an opportunity to move back home <laughs> and so I took it and it's been a little bit of a slow go but we've had a crazy year this year uh Stauffer does have a distribution center here in Fresno um we've had it since 2016 nearly the end of 2016 and uh slowly but surely we're, we're growing but i'd certainly like to get our name out uh, but my purpose today is really to just talk about safety um there are so many people as you and i discussed tara that hold wear multiple hats within companies uh the small companies even some of the larger companies um do not have a full-time safety person um and some don't know about you know, hiring consultants, some do, some rely on their workman's comp insurance. Uh, I just try to bring them as much information as I can and help them you know, wade through everything um, on the, it, you name it, whether it's form, fit and function of personal protective equipment, um, or if it's trying to help them figure out a way to lower their mod rate for their workman's comp insurance. Um, it, there, there's lots of ways that we, that I can be of help, um, whether it's, you know, working with Stoffer and selling your product or just answering an email or two here and there, or taking a phone call. I, I, this, as we discussed, this is not a sell job for me. This is just getting the word out and helping people do their everyday job. What is something you wish more people knew about personal protective equipment? What do I wish they knew more about? I wish there was a less muddy way for people to access the things that change all the time. Um, just as an example, cut resistant hand protection has changed a number of times over the last, well, definitely 10 years, but I'd, it's changed multiple times in the last five years. Um, and nobody knows what these things mean you know they get told to use a ANSI cut level three glove and they wonder why the EN 388 European cut level three isn't sufficient there's there's a lot of differences but you don't necessarily know where to look to find it um, I wish people could access that type of information easier and you said you wanted to give some pointers on how to properly wear a mask would you like to share that with our viewers and well, listeners yeah um 
I've got, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to share my screen. I've got a few little slides here. Um, and I get out and about and every day I see people wearing them incorrectly. And, and really it's not doing them any good, but it's not doing the people around them any good. Um, and it's, it's just as simple as put the mask on over your nose. doesn't matter if it's a paper tight mask like we all have and we've all probably worn at one point or another these last nine, ten months or a, you know, a nicer cloth mask um, over the nose, under the chin, and you're, you're good to go. So on the, the first slide is just the introduction, of course, um, and how to properly wear the mask. Moving on, I've, I've included some myths and some facts here that I was able to gather over the last few months as, as it really started to bug me. Um, um, wearing a mask, you know, what are the myths? What are the facts? Wearing a mask to protect against coronavirus has become part of our daily lives, right? Part of daily life for all of us. Though wearing a mask is one of the most important things you can do to prevent coronavirus infection, there are still many misunderstandings about wearing a mask, how safe and effective, how to use them properly, when and where masks are needed, um, there, there's lots of information out there. I've found the most reliable and where I've pulled a lot of my information is from the CDC. It actually seems to be very thorough. The Mayo, Cl Mayo Clinic has some pretty good information as well. I've heard all of these myths and to the point where it, it almost is not, I don't even carry on the conversation anymore. I, I can't believe what I hear on the news in a lot of cases um, on how to wear masks or what to do and things like that. It's pretty basic. One of the things I think that gets forgotten the most is before, and I'm picking up a paper mask, before you put on the mask, before you even touch these straps, wash your hands. If you haven't washed your hands, maybe you've infected that thing before you even put it on. Um, try to not handle it, the media filter as much as possible. Um, I see a lot of that happening. Just over the ears. It if you're using a mask, you like see that it's soiled or starts to become damp from exhale, you know, your exhalation, your breaths, get rid of it, replace it. It is definitely disposable. I've seen people wearing the same mask and days at a time that I know personally, and I know I know it's the same mask because the same marks are on it, the same type of contamination. You're not doing yourself any good. If you're wearing a fabric mask, cotton, whatever it may be, multiple layers, try to have more than one. But if you only have the one, wash it daily. When you're done for the day and you know you're home, wash it, hang it to dry. They don't like to play in the dryer very well. But just take care of it. Take care of yourself. Take care of others around you. A few of the other, you know, myths um, out there. I'm, cloth I'm, masks don't protect you. Well, the fact is they are effective. They create a barrier between your mouth and your nose and those around you. That's the most important part. I'm um, seeing people wearing the face shield in a face shield alone. I'm not necessarily an expert on this subject. But I still think if you cough or sneeze, stuff can get out from under um, that. I understand um, protecting your eyes, and that's a very important part of the whole thing. But I, I think if you're going to take the time to put on a shield, you might want to at least you know, put a thin ear loop you know, mask on, something, something that you can breathe through. That's the biggest complaint that I hear is can't breathe through it. So then they're pulling it down under their nose. I saw one the other day. They just had it hooked on their ear, one ear, just dangling there. I thought, okay, and told me they were wearing their mask. The cloth mask, is, as I've got highlighted here, it's any of these masks are keeping the droplet from coming into you, but also from getting out to the people around you if you sneeze or cough. I don't know what you're doing when you're going. If you're using public transportation, retail stores, I don't think we can get into any really here locally without having a mask on, though not let you in. In some cases, I've seen them chasing people down in the store. 
and people running. It's kind of comical. So ju just wear it. Be be cognizant of the people around you. I've tried this the, this entire time to not be paranoid about it. Before Thanksgiving, I did have to take my, I was exposed, to, possibly exposed to somebody through work, a client, and I had to take a test. It's not any fun. It's not hard. But the worst part was the weight. I felt fine. Yes, you could be asymptomatic. I felt fine. Everything was good. But in the back of my mind is, when am I going to get the results that took a week? And I've heard worse stories than that. But a week of not very good sleep and just thinking, when am I going to know? When am I going to be clear? Um, or how do I take it from there if I'm not? So just those things. And if it's on your mind, believe me, it's on everybody else's mind. All kinds of different masks. The N95s are out there that everybody wanted so badly. Um, don't necessarily have to have N95. If you do have N95 and you're using it, make sure you don't have a valve on there. Droplets aren't coming in through that valve, but they are going out if you're coughing and you're possibly exposing people. There's a couple little other facts on there that I thought were, were kind of interesting. The last one on there is uh, the myth of building up CO2 in the mask. No, it's not happening. It's not getting trapped. But I liked the fact that they have the information here, how people with breathing problems, children under age of two. Now, I was just told this morning by my lovely wife that that has changed to children under 10 or 11. Our kids are old and old enough out of the house in their 20s that I hadn't even thought about that. But I take caution either way. To just kind of, I think in this case, just think more of others around you. Be friendly to thy neighbor, I guess. Real quick, slide number four is how to wear it. We kind of covered that real quick. Um, little um, infographic there shows the, the check sign for the plus that, hey, it's you've got it on right. And the keys to that, as I'm demonstrating here again, holding the straps. I've got it over my nose. I've got it under my chin and over my ears. Now, these ear saver things work wonderfully. Um, typically, I've got one on my mask because those things start chafing on me. Um, either way, whether you're hooking it on your ears or you're using one of these, it's fine. Adjust the nose clip. Most of the ear loop masks that I've seen have the little piece of metal wire in there. Um, and just make sure it's under your chin. You're, I'm good to go. It's it's the the biggest issue now is is fogging. If you wear glasses or if you're out and about and you're, you're luckily in a, you're outside and you're enjoying the sunshine and you've got your sunglasses on, I have found with the ear loop mask, I might look a little funny, but I can put my sunglasses down just over that nose bridge, that piece of metal. And most of the time, my glasses won't fog. If it's an issue for you, anti-fog products were kind of tough to get for a while, but they are becoming readily available once again. Whether you're buying that from, you know, one of the retail stores or, or a safety supplier, uh, it, it's, it's pretty much all the same. If you're using lens wipes that would look something like a hand wipe um, in a package like that, if it's not specifically really just an anti-fog, it probably is better than nothing, but won't last very long. First time you wipe it with your, you know, a rag or, or wash the glasses, it's going to be gone. Um, so if you're looking for an anti-fog type product to put on, on glasses or a face shield or something like that, there's, there's some others out there. Um, Parker's Perfect is one, and it's just one that I happened to find online when during this. Um, it's a wipe. It's two steps. You, you wipe it on, take a clean soft rag and kind of buff it out. And it'll hold up for at least for the day, at least, even if you do have to rinse your glasses off a couple of times. Um, moving on through this part of it. Did you have any questions on any of this type of thing on the donning and doffing of the mask and how to wear it and take care of them and I have noticed a lot of people wear it under their chin and not fully on their face or they'll have it hanging off of their ear. 
you said to make sure to wash your hands before even putting on the mask. Do you have any tips for making sure that the mask is kept clean when you take it off momentarily? Um, I've used myself. I've I've used a, a Ziploc bag. A lot of times I'll have one in my pocket if I'm using something like this, you know, the, just the paper ear loop mask, because I can usually get a day out of one unless I've been somewhere where I've gotten something on it or, or heaven forbid, I've dropped it. You know, if I, I, I keep more than one in my car, I just, um, cause I've dropped them. I've had them fall out of my pocket. I've done all kinds of things. Next thing you know, I've stepped on it. Well, I'm not putting that back on. Um, some of them, this is, this is a, a fabric mask that is actually made by one of the manufacturers we deal with. That is, the fabric is actually an inherently antibacterial. It was kind of interesting, but in this case, it comes with a little bag. So I've been using the bag in a lot of cases, even for my ear loop mask that I keep, I find for me, the ear loop mask is easier to breathe through. If I'm doing any kind of work in a, in a facility for a customer, these things, the moisture builds up pretty quickly and they get tough to breathe through. Um, and again, that's what I hear the biggest complaint is people either they're hot, they're hot to wear, or they're having difficulty breathing through them. Um, I use the same type of thought process for these masks as I would for a respirator with a customer that's, you know, painting or something. If it's tough, if, if the ear loop mask, if it is getting difficult to breathe through it, it's filter media is pretty much used up. It's either gathered enough moisture in it. And usually that's the case that that's why you're having difficulty breathing that um, it would be time to replace it. Something like this, um, take it, wash it, but then again, unless you've got another one with you, you know, once it's got moisture built up in it, it's, you, you're kind of done. Um, other than that, that, that was really the sore subject I had that I wanted to touch on with when you invited me uh, on the show. But moving forward, there is a lot of information that I would like to get out to, to the people on, on a somewhat regular basis. Um, it just even have my, you, my email was out there in the beginning. If you want to email me a question, um, I, again, it's, this is not about me trying to build my business. This is me trying to pass on a lot of knowledge I've gained over 30 plus years. Um, that seems to be in this day and age, even more important. Um, especially with supply chain issues, things like that out there, we're experiencing them just like any of the other distributors out there with PPE. Um, if you think you're going to call me today and order a bunch of disposable gloves and I'm going to drop them off on Monday, eh, it's probably not going to happen. Um, that's, and people should anticipate disposable gloves cost being high and hard to get probably through 2021 is what I'm hearing. So just FYI, um, some of the other things that have been affected, disposable clothing in a lot of areas, um, the N95 respirators, you notice you don't hear much about those anymore. They do recommend those in the health set of the, the healthcare setting. The 3Ms and the Honeywells of the world, the, the manufacturers that are making the N95s, the healthcare industry is getting prioritized to the top. Um, and that's that's a good thing. The, the frontline people need need those products as well. Um, but there are other options out there. Um, and we are starting to see some of the N95s become more available from all of from everybody. They've just seemed to limit the SKUs available. Um, they've limited all the big manufacturers have limited what they're producing. They don't have the breadth of product line right now and probably won't through 2021, we're being told. Um, so I, I'm free for questions anytime. Uh, just give me a, a little bit to reply to emails. We are starting to travel a little bit. So I am the West Coast account manager. So I cover Bakersfield to the Canadian border. So you might catch me on a flight or in the car or something. And I, you know, but usually I can get back to somebody with a response in 24 hours. 
Um, and if there's any way that I can help, please feel free to contact me. Well, thank you for joining me today, Eric. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we close for the day? No, not not that I can think of, Tara. I would, you know, you and I have discussed putting together some other segments for the future, um, more specific to everyday PPE used in manufacturing setting, whether it's food manufacturing or just general manufacturing. Um, there, there's a lot out there, and I'm sure we can. We'll be getting some very good information to a lot of the listeners and, and the, the followers out there. Um, and I'm excited to be a part of it anytime. I look forward to sharing your breadth of information with our viewers and listeners. I hope you have a good day. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Enjoy your weekend. You too. One of our sponsors is Dynamic Coatings Incorporated. They are a concrete restoration and flooring solution. They offer seamless, antimicrobial, durable, dustproof, and fast cure flooring installations that are USDA, FDA, OSHA, and HACCP approved. You can reach them at dciflooring.com or give them a call at their Sacramento location at 916-485-6800. Their Oakland location at 510 510- Three five two seven thousand. Their Fresno location at five five nine two two five four six zero five, or their Los Angeles location five six two six three four nine eight eight seven.